All right, welcome back to the channel that braps KMR Kyle Mohan Racing. We're at the shop and I've got some great questions recently about 20B or three rotor engines. And we're working on a couple three rotors at the shop and it's the motor that I campaign in both of my Formula Drift competition cars. So I figured it would be great to do some technical discussion about what makes the factory three rotor different than a 13B and what parts might be interchangeable. So if you're trying to build a three rotor on a budget, which I have done myself, there's specific parts you have to have that are factory three rotor 20B parts. And there are some other parts that you can get away with subbing in as 13B components. So what I laid out right here in front of us are the actual factory Cosmo 20B three rotor irons, side plates, housings, side housings, whatever you want to call them. They're labeled in different ways, but you have your cast iron side housings or side plates. And really when it comes down to it, if you're aware, the Cosmo was sold in two configurations. There was a Cosmo 13B and there was the Cosmo 20B. So those Cosmo 13B components, like your rear housing, your center plate, your front plate or side housing, all actually are the same as the Cosmo 13B. So in the uniqueness category, it really only leaves the factory thick housing. And this is unique to the 20B, and this is what really makes a lot of the magic possible because this center thick housing is made stronger to actually hold a one of a kind center bearing. And this bearing and gear actually goes in this thick center plate allowing the whole motor to work. Because if you're familiar with rotary engines, the 13B has a main bearing at the back and the front. And it wouldn't be good for performance to have that long of an eccentric shaft unsupported all the way through. And if you're familiar with rotary engines, you understand that the tricoidal uh, rotation of the rotor is based off the positioning of the gear that resides on those main bearings. So to hold the rotor, it needs to have that bearing for strength and that gear for rotational uh, direction and phasing. So if you notice, that thick plate and gear are very unique. And maybe we can do some comparisons with gears and other components but you'll notice that it does not have any backing on it and it's actually bolted in with smaller bolts from the back side and has a land that you're actually going into and a set pin, alignment pin, sorry, it's shadowed right there, which is going to orientate the gear for your rotational alignment of the rotor. So it's, it's not just as simple as grabbing your 13B center plate and, and putting it in there, making the stack longer. But you could, in essence, use 13B rotor housings. You could use rear, center, and front Cosmo 13B components, or you could run FD3S side plates. Now, the only difference that you really have, aside from some, some small stuff, is the Cosmos actually have a taller port. There's enough material that you can take the FD3S and port it down to that same dimension. And when you're talking about your intake port volume or flow, most of the time 20Bs at this point are being modified. So if you had a FD3S block or some type of 13B components that are similar, and you happen to be able to acquire a thick plate gear and the eccentric shaft itself, you could build a, a three rotor or a 20B up with almost all of the rest of the components being 13B based. And, and we've done this before, whether it's the subbing of 13B Cosmo or 13B FD3S. When you start to get into peripheral port motors, 
then your port flow matters less because you're going to be bringing the intake air through the rotor housing. So we've actually even seen customers use Turbo 2 or second generation side plates, irons, housings, whatever you want to call them, um, in their peripheral port blocks because your intakes are actually plugged and you're using peripheral intake. So lots of potential and discussion and opportunity to actually work with 20Bs. And it really comes down to the most important components being the 20B eccentric shaft, your center main bearing, and your center bearing carrier plate or thick housing as they're referred to often in the rotary world, the thick center plate in a 20B. There were some companies um, going back a few years that actually made custom eccentric shafts to make what we called short crank three rotors. And similar to a four rotor, <clears throat> they were modifying a thin center plate, making a shorter crank and thereby making a lighter version of a three rotor um, with all 13B components minus that custom crank shaft. Um, as it turned out, uh, these plates um, being modified into bearing carriers just aren't quite as strong as the factory uh, plate. And because there are, I wouldn't call it plentiful, but because there are 20 Bs out there and people still are picking up shafts, picking up housings, there's still used motors out there. I think that that's continued the longevity of the factory motors and made the short crank 20 Bs a little less desirable as they're just not quite as strong. Another way to go is if you can't find a factory 20 B, you could always buy an aluminum center plate and aftermarket stationary gear or find a used one and then buy an aftermarket 20 B eccentric shaft. And with those few components, you could always then again use either Cosmo 13 B uh, 20B or FD3S components to build a 20B block from that point. Obviously, there are modifications to be made. Um, the front plates themselves, if they're 13B or 13B Cosmo, then they don't have the factory through holes for the front tension bolts from the factory that go through from the front housing. But all of that is machinable. Um, and I think in a world where there's a lot of machining going on, a lot of custom car builds, it's important to know that it is possible, but it doesn't come without modification and expense. This, the best way to go is still to find a complete 20B factory block if you're starting from scratch. But if you're able to find some of those key components, you can sub in 13B parts, or if you buy a 20B and it needs some components subbed in, you've got options. So I hope this actually educates everybody a little bit on what makes the 20B special. Um, it shares that same port volume as the 13B Cosmo, which is one of the biggest uh, port runners uh, that Mazda made in this category of motors. Um, so that's one of the reasons they're desirable and make good horsepower. But it's also because they've got that factory thick bearing carrier plate that is actually very strong and whether it be drift, drag race, or road race, that support for the shaft, that support for the rotors, that support for the block is key to making horsepower. And it's why we're able to push 1,000 horsepower out of, our, out of our modified 20Bs for drifting and why we see in the drag race world people achieving anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 plus horsepower on modified factory 20Bs. Obviously, there's still a great potential for all of the billet block components and billet block components can be subbed in as parts become less available. But I thought it was a great opportunity to talk 20Bs, maybe start a, a little bit more of a technical, net technical discussion on three rotors and 20Bs since it's what we build a lot of and run a lot of. So I, I definitely look forward to the comments. Um, you know, please let me know if you have questions. We can start to individually break down some of these components and how we need to modify them. Um, and we're gonna be building a couple 20Bs over the next month, so we can probably do a buildup on one of these motors as well. So I think that's a wrap. It was a fun weekend of racing. We're back at the shop, building motors, porting, polishing, making horsepower, sharing the rotary dream 
with anybody who wants to live that dream. All right, so that's a wrap. I'm going to get back to work. I got to work on this.